All right. Look at that empty chair representing the hopes and dreams of all that have come before us. Ah, I'm here. Sorry, I'm sweaty. I've been working all day. Ah! Am I too far? <sighs> Folks, post New Jersey, Rudy. Yeah, you see how I look? That's what New Jersey does to you. Be careful, kids. Don't smoke. All right. Um, I want to. I want to go over an interesting inflection point right now, um, regarding the entire collectible market as a whole. All right, and that is. I started this YouTube channel in 2016. Um, once it went viral from everybody making fun of me by the end of 2016, by 2017 we rolled around. The going consensus was that the, the rise of alpha investments in a public perspective uh, was going to permanently shift all collectible boxes, assets, items. All sealed products would permanently change because the Rudy Empire, the Patron Empire, there's essentially going to be all these thousands upon thousands of people sitting on endless amounts of sealed product. This was the consensus by the end of 2017. Um, and I will acknowledge, um, as the Patreon on this channel grew, uh, more and more patrons and more and more people who watch this channel would send me pictures. Rudy, here's my stash and here's what I'm doing. And you, know, my wife leaves the house and then uh, I go into the dining room and I pull the bookcase and it spins around. Instead of a bunch of porn and blow-up dolls, it was sealed boxes. And I said, my man. Yeah, true story. And, you know, I fast forward to 2018, 2019, all this stuff. Um, keep in mind, you know, that was a very tough time. That was a very big bear market for new magic. And all the flow of money went to vintage, old school stuff and four horsemen sets and the rise of buyouts between 2017 and 2018. And new magic was a dumpster fire and nobody wanted to touch it. The flow of money went around all new magic. So by the time 2019 rolled around, things started to shift very quickly. Uh, new magic started to do very well again. Attitude started to change and everybody was really like, oh my god, new magic is still a thing. Because by 2017-2018, when I look back at it, um, that was when I was getting ridiculed a lot for, you know, Rudy's trying to pump and dump all this new magic that's worthless and overprinted, artificial scarcity, uh, printed to oblivion, all these shirts and terms and all these, all these meme names uh, were being used. Uh, this is way before the 2020 uh, To The Moon and Diamond Hands era. And, you know, it, but the consensus was... That nothing would go up because everybody was doing it. The consensus was that the reason collectibles performed so well is because it was that niche, niche market. And people weren't doing it. There weren't a bunch of hoarders and creepy guys in basements like me with fancy haircuts. And while there was truth to that, it, it did increase the quantity of people did it. But what was interesting was it didn't really impact the longevity in like long-term movement of those sealed products from the era of 2016, 2017, 2018. And I, honestly, looking back at this era, it didn't matter. You could have bought any, any sealed product from 2016, 17, 18, 19. And every single one would have done very well. Now that's perverted and crazy. Like, you see all this crazy stuff and everything. This is all newer stuff. Things are out of print now. Last calls and filling orders and all that stuff. And, and it's crazy how things continue to evolve and move forward. But nothing's really changed. So this brings me to the kicker, folks. Here we are. 2022. Okay. Everything's going to zero. Absolute. I mean, the negativity now is equal to, if not worse, than 2020. And possibly getting to the levels of 08 negativity, which is very fascinating. I mean, people are purely like, I don't care. I'll take the 30%, 40%, or if it was a new publicly traded fintech, SPAC, NASDAQ tech company, I'll take my 80, 90% loss and I'm out. I mean, people are to the point where it's like, you know, it's all worthless. It's all worthless. All this stuff, worthless. I always want to do a chair spin. So now we've hit 2022 in the collectible world, and this is the craziest shit, folks. I feel we have almost spun all the way back around to like pre-YouTube Rudy when I still had, you know, look at my old videos. I was like thinner, had nice hair, took care of myself before I like ate cardboard 10 days a week. Yeah, there are 10 days in my mind per week. 
And I'm like, we hit a point now where everybody is just like, F it, I'm out. I, don't, I am not hoarding. Who's going to be dumb enough to sit on new Weiss products or Pokemon? Or, oh, God, there's Rudy's Chilling Rain in the back over there. Ugh. Oh, God. Oh, my goodness. What is that? Strixhaven. The Mystical Archives that are three cents a card? AFR? AFR? Oh. You know? And it's just like... It's like we went through this valley of the shadow of all these emotions. And I feel like we're like... It's like we've started over. And it was a funny thing. There was like... In like social psychology in different eras, they always talk about the ebbs and flows and cycles of life. And there's all kinds of things on different scales. And they say there is kind of a seven-year cycle. We're kind of like a little mini cycle. And of course, you can get on larger scales, like some of the other YouTube channels talk about these huge uh, eras of like 100-year blocks and how it's very fascinating stuff. And But it was I was watching this one, I think it was like a, a Harvard or an MIT lecture on YouTube. I highly recommend If you guys get bored, don't, don't just sit there and, and swipe on Tinder and looking at hot chicks and all these muscular guys that are better looking than me. Don't just swipe on YouTube shorts and TikToks. Seriously, go on YouTube. Type in like Harvard Lecture, MIT Lectures, Yale and Stanford. Dude, they have full one, two hour lectures, folks. Play them in the background. Learn about shit. Put some effort into your life, you know? Seriously, folks, stop looking at all the TikToks and these short videos of all these chicks jumping around with their nice curves and hot stuff. Yeah, I know. I know you watch those because I see them too. And man, that crap will suck you down the rabbit hole. All right. But in 2022, it's like all of a sudden... Everybody's against collecting sealed product. Nobody is hoarding sealed product. I think the only idiot left on the ship. Everybody else jumped off the ship. Captain's in the bar hitting on the chicks. Ship is like Costa Concordia, man. We're sideways and everyone's going, I'm out. And I'm sitting here going, I don't, everything's fine. Everything's fine. The whole ship's sinking. And I'm like, I'm still putting my money to work. I'm doing all this stuff and... Sure, I've lost my ass on my, my stock account, my equity account and everything, just like everybody else. I'm down probably 20%, you know, but for a year to date, that's, you know, everybody is. It doesn't mean you're good or bad at it. It's just how the market ebb and flows. But nobody, nobody is like, is, is like, it's like the sealed product in the collectible world. It's like everybody just bolted for the door and said, fuck it, it's over. That's it. It's over. And I, I haven't seen this level of like throwing in the towel. You know, I, I went through a little bit of it in 2020, but that was such a 90-day short-term thing because, you know, everything shut down. Oh, you can't white bleach on a black lotus and get the virus off. You know, stupid stuff. And But then again, you know, after 90 days, the market immediately swung back. Everything was back to normal. People were getting, you know, stimmy checks and government was just printing money machine go burr. And, but now, you know, since, you know, we peaked at October, November last year and collectibles are now down. Over six consecutive months. And I don't just mean magic. Not just Pokemon. You know, nothing's really gone up. I mean, Kamigawa collector boxes were kind of an anomaly. But because one thing did something, we can't just be like, ah! You know, I mean, overall, the market as a whole is not appreciating and swelling or growing or the bubble's not getting bigger. You know, no matter what you want to call it, there isn't really any place to hide right now. I mean, what do you do? Leave it in your bank account or your checking account? Get 0%. At least you're not losing money in stocks and collectibles, but you're getting the living hell kicked out of you from inflation. So essentially, you're losing 10-15% of your money every year anyways. It's like... And you know, I'm looking at this stuff, folks, and I'm like, is this stuff really dead? Because that's what I'm getting. All Patreon messages. You know, Rudy, look, man. Love you. Still going to support you on Patreon. I like your hair. I feel like I didn't support you. You wouldn't get a hit. You know, blah, blah, blah. But, I, you know, I haven't been buying much. I'm like, look, man. You know, if you're a patron, you don't want to buy anything? That's fine. You want to buy everything? That's fine. You want to buy select things in your side? I don't care. Do whatever you want. I'm not going to judge either way. But people are genuinely just like, the consensus is, I don't want to do it anymore. I don't trust it. I don't trust the stock market. I don't trust the collectible market. I don't trust the startup Kickstarter era, you know, the Flesh and Bloods and MetaZoos and the other 150 new TC. I don't, I don't want any of it. And it's fascinating. Because the only thing that's really changed in my opinion, is how all of us feel. And we're all taking feedback from each other. Also known as a circle jerk. Yes, I have discovered that there is apparently a Magic the Gathering circle jerk Reddit that apparently has almost the same amount of subscribers as the finance and other groups, which is hilarious. 
If that doesn't speak volumes on the culture, I don't know what does. But more importantly, we're all feeding on each other's emotions, right? We're all, you know, when Bob and Bob and Tim and Timmy are like, I ain't buying this stuff. It's all shit. I ain't going to lose it all. Let Rudy take the loss. You know, I'm like, I'm sitting here and I've been thinking about this stuff. And I'm like, what's going to happen in 12 to 24 months? When we, or not even 24 months, six to nine months. When we hit the holidays of 2022, you know, and then 2023 rolls around. And all of a sudden, all the stuff that crapped out in 2021, everything went down. AFR, Strixhaven, Crimson, Midnight Hunt, Chilling Rain, Pokemon sets. I mean, you know what? The white sets, well, so, some of the white sets, Flesh and Blood. I guess Metazoo's holding stable off its highs, but still doing well. And, I mean, you look at all these card games, and it's like, what's going to happen in 12 months when we move to the next wave or chapter in life? And all of a sudden... All these thousands of people that were hoarding product and flipping to each other. I'm sorry, uh, investor selling to investor. Remember, it's only two people. No one does this. It's literally Rudy selling to Ruby, and then Ruby sells back to Rudy. That's what the internet's told me, and the intraweb is always accurate. And I'm like, what does that mean? You know, what does that mean? Because in 2020, I remember screeching for 2020, buy something, buy anything. And then recently, in the last six months, even this downturn, I was telling everybody, I was like, that Core 21, Theros Beyond Death, Acoria, Throne of Eldraine, it's all flashy age era product, post-war of the spark. And all that flashy era product from 2020, I'm telling you all, you bet, I mean, and again, it, even in this market, that crap is still drifting upwards, and not by much, but I mean, it's holding its own, it's not going down, and I'm telling you all, I'm like, Look at look at that stuff. Look what's happening to that stuff. Look around. You think this stuff is going to be any different? That's my point. It's not going to be much any difference of anything. What's that landscaping? What's that noise? Oh, we got landscapers outside. Sorry, they're doing some yard work related things. So I'll give it a second. Sorry, we got some noise. I think I see them in the distance. Sorry to interrupt the sound, everybody. But anyways, well, we'll push through it. So. I mean, am I the only one that thinks about that? Am I the only one sitting here going, so in 2023, are we all just going to look back at everything from 2021 as garbage? Put Monarch boxes are zero? Strixhaven, AFR, Crimson, Midnight Hunts, all zero? Pokemon, what, Battle Styles is negative zero? That's a real, that's a real number. Chilling Rain is what? If you own a box of Chilling Rain, you got to literally send a check in to Pokemon? I mean, what? I, I just... I'm just not understanding. It's like everybody's given up and left. And I've been thinking about it. And thinking about it. And like even internally, I've been following the data. And like even my own patrons and customers, and I talk to other LGSs. And yeah, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. They're still buying. Still buying. But like the standard draft boxes and things, Midnight Hunt, Crimson Val... It is the least selling standard product. Like Midnight Hunt has been on, I've been offering to the patrons for, you know, the typical thing for months. It's been months, two months, three months. I don't even remember. And um, it just, I mean, it, I guess it sells some-ish. And, and temporarily since Kamigawa is still on allocation and all that stuff, I, I got like literally one shipment of Crimson Val just to have something to offer. Because some patrons really wanted it and they refused to buy from Amazon because it got burned and same old shit, you know. And I was like, look, and it's barely selling. And I'm like, literally, like, I think like 5% of the patrons even want it. Like, le maybe less than 5%. And it's fascinating because I'm like, the last time I saw sales and data this low, and I, I, I've, I've asked, I've kind of poked around to some other LGSs and distributors, and like, hey man, what are you guys seeing? And they just simply put, the market's weak. People are scared. People are bearish. And, you know, and I remember saying on the phone to one store owner, I said, you know, the last time I saw Magic Standard boxes this week, it was Amon Ket, Hour of Devastation era. Amon Ket did okay. Hour of Devastation did bad. And then we moved into Ixalan and Rivals of Ixalan, and bad went to worse. 
over 20 to 30, it was like 25, 23% or something of LGS has stopped ordering magic. I think like a quarter of LGS has even shut down, at least according to dis distribution. I don't know if that means shut down or just stopped ordering completely. It was like what they call a dead account or a ghost account. I'm not sure. But, you know, and I, and I look at that. I'm like, are we repeating the same 2017, 2018? Because I'm sorry, the world is not ending. Nothing has changed. But people everywhere are just like, fuck it, I'm out. And I'm going to tell you all. I'm going to cut this video off here. I think everyone's wrong. I think the market's wrong. And just like the stock market... 90% of people in the stock market never make money. It's like 98% of day traders lose money. Some ridiculous number. And you know, if 90 plus percent of the people are wrong, what are those few percent people doing that's so different that's making them stand out? I mean, am I completely insane and completely nuts and lost my mind because I'm the only one buying this shit? Maybe I am. But we're all going to follow up like we always do. And we're going to find out. But I have to say, we are still in a situation where the biggest risk of all is not taking a risk. The, there is more downside risk, in my opinion, by being fearful and staying out of a, any market. I don't care. Stocks, whatever you're in. Collectibles, blow-up dolls, things that vibrate. I don't, I don't care. It's more dangerous to be scared and, and, and just be a Timmy than it is to be in the market now. I mean, things have been so weak for so long. Six, what, seven months now? Stocks have been down for six, seven months straight from the high. Collectibles haven't done anything. Most people have bailed. The flippers are long gone. The Pokemon flippers, oh my goodness. I haven't talked to a sports card store. And they're like, dude, the sports card industry is just, from 12 months ago, I can't even recognize it. And I'm just like, well, I'm still buying everything. I'm still all in flesh and blood. I cannot wait for the new MetaZoo thing and the space stuff. Man, do I got some epic stuff. Going to the moon, baby, literally. And, um, you know, I, I just, I think Magic's going to continue to have a great year. People are acting like Magic and Hasbro are dead. And I'm sitting here looking at Commander Legends 2 and Commander Legends 2 collector boxes come to Papa. And I'm looking at this Quad Masters. And Dominaria and Jump Starts and an Unset and Brothers Ward. And then I'm looking at Flesh and Blood with this new Uprising. With flipping crazy hidden cards all through it. And all these wild things. I'm looking at the new Pokemon set. Looks great. And like, all this shit looks good. And people are just so damn bearish. I think it's full. I think everyone's full of shit. I'm calling it out. And if I'm wrong, make videos about me. It's what everyone else does for years. But what's funny... They never follow up like I do. Isn't that funny? Isn't that funny? People that call you out in 2016, 2018, 2017 for selling patrons. Ixalan or Amonkhet or Iconic Masters and all these things. And Flesh and Blood, Mitazoo and Pokemon. You know, nobody follows up like I do. It's like the market changes later on and they don't seem to go, Oh wow, look what the results, look what time did to things. So, that's the conclusion of the video. I don't get it. I think everyone's wrong. And I think the market's wrong. And as you can see, that's my last shipment, folks. It's my last AFR shipment because they did the last call out of print. It's my last one. I think AFR is right there. It's my last thing. That's it. That's all I got. Save it for the future. Future box openings. I'll deal with it. I'll reevaluate in a couple years. And you know, just like many times in life and just like the reserve list, just like how many alpha cards are left in the world, you know, I think the market's wrong. I always believe that the market is just so damn extreme pendulum swinging. 2021, everybody thought Monarch was going to 1,000. Monarch was going to 69,000. 2022, Mexican pizza's back at Taco Bell and you get a free Monarch box. That's literally the extreme nature of human beings. And usually the reality and the correct choice is in the middle somewhere. And the best way to figure it out is to remove the emotion and think about it. And man, the emotions are out of control, man. I'm staying the course. Maybe I'm wrong. And uh, we'll follow up and find out. Here's a picture of my crotch.